people talk about, are there things you should cut out? Like for instance, gluten. Should you be eating gluten? Is gluten have any impact on the thyroid? We talked about how the number one underlying cause of low thyroid is what? Autoimmune, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody will know from our programs, one of our major focuses, uh, areas we focus on is autoimmune disease. It's one of the chronic diseases I deal with a ton and I have a ton of them, right? Um, and one of the most important lessons, and you might want to write this down, is that gluten is a known trigger of all autoimmune disease. doesn't matter what it is. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, do you guys know what percentage of low thyroid is autoimmune? Does anyone know? Alumni might already know. And we already know from part one that the gluten actually biochemical wise and the way the molecule looks to your immune system triggers the autoimmune attack like kerosene 10 times. Mm -hmm. So you think iodine is bad? Throw some gluten in there, mix with iodine, and then ha 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 ha, that's bad. Um, so really important to think about with any autoimmune disease is I would say eliminating um, eating gluten is really critical. Yeah, I think also with gluten unique to the thyroid, I mean, I 100% everything you said, you know, I am not a fan of gluten, we work with so many people with autoimmunity, and how many people tell us, man, I, you know, I, I joined the program, the first thing I did was cut out gluten, and oh my gosh, two weeks, three weeks later, I'm feeling so much better, right? And that's the major change that they had. But what's interesting about, about gluten and the thyroid is that um, the protein structure of gluten is really similar to thyroid tissue. So the body, you know, if it's, if it, it can get confused, right? So gluten kind of kicks out like this autoimmune attack. And then the autoimmunity is like, boy, I got to attack that gluten because I don't like it, but the thyroid kind of looks like that. So I'm going to go attack the thyroid too. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, there's a lot of crossover with gluten and the thyroid. I just don't recommend it. Hi, I'm Meg UMD and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, Go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of transform. Go ahead, click the link and I'll see you in that training. So this is a, what I say in one of the training modules that I do, and you can quote this as a, as a Dr. Maggie, you made up word. Um, the way that gluten looks, looks a little too human-y. <laughs> and so, and so your body sees it. And if your body's already attacking, autoimmune attack is your immune system. It's supposed to look at a germ outside your body or a cancer cell and say, you don't belong here. I'm going to kill you. But in autoimmune disease, no matter what the disease is, it's looking at some part or parts of your body and says, you're a germ and I'm going to kill you. Right? Mm -hmm. So that being said, when you get gluten in your system, because it looks so human-y, the parts of it, your body says, oh, there's a bunch of invaders coming in I don't like. So it not only attacks the gluten, but it attacks everything else it was already attacking. So it revs up every autoimmune disease. So gluten is a no can do with any autoimmune disease, period. I wanna make sure to ask one more question at least in that, what about food sensitivities? Do they play a role in this? And how does that impact the thyroid health? Well, this is, okay. So we just had launched my food mapping masterclass and this was what, uh, we just launched it in January. And so we are on our third month with working with individuals on their food sensitivities and it is freaking mind blowing the heck out of people, just how much and how big the connection is between food sensitivities and all chronic disease. Mm -hmm. So the question then becomes for thyroid is, is it just gluten? Because plenty of people with low thyroid have removed gluten. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have, and they realize that did help, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. There are other foods that can actually trigger the autoimmune attack as well. And there is a test, a method, and a system to identify what those foods are. So you know all the foods that are triggering it. And it may be way less than you think. I can't tell you how much improvement that we've seen in people's symptoms just starting with foods and working through their foods and figuring out their sensitivities and lowering the uh the the immune system response and the histamine responses and helping with digestion i mean it helps so much with that autoimmune attack so yeah it's, i call that kind of the front end of helping the autoimmunity and it's just it's just mind-blowing what we see as far as outcomes go i mean the people people's symptoms just get so much better well, I actually have like a case study I just remembered recently too, because we work with a ton of individuals with Graves or Hashimoto's. And I remember Jane came into the program and she had 
um, known Hashimoto's and was already off gluten, but was still wondering why her meds were constantly being adjusted while she was still feeling like weight gain, the exhaustion, the fatigue, and the brain fog, right? And thyroid labs came in and they looked okay, nothing dramatic. So it wasn't like, oh, we need to you know, change the prescription dose of any medication. The question then was, why did it, the autoimmune attack still swing so much up and down? Well, at that moment when her labs were tested, she was decent at that point. But from her symptoms, it was obvious she was going high, low, high, low. Well, she had removed gluten and temporarily felt better and got worse about three to four months later. And we did her food mapping. Okay. And Kathy, I think you were there. So we revealed her food mapping. She's like, but I did all the gluten-free. And how many of you guys have done the gluten-free? And it turned out that her gluten, yes, she removed it, but her what was positive sky high. All oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because all if in. you're going to remove all the gluten, you're going to go, you know, and some people will move dairy, cow dairy, and then they drink almond milk, and then they'll start replacing flour with either coconut flour or almond flour. How many of you want gluten-free and replace it with almond flour? And that's not bad. That's good. That's a high protein, higher fat, right? More balanced nutritionally flour than white flour example, right? But the thing that she didn't know was that she had an intolerance to almond. And as a result, she went gluten-free, but then over ate because she didn't have the knowledge to know it was also almond. So as a result, whew, her symptoms went berserk. That's another kerosene in the fire. So we, really importantly, in our food mapping masterclass, and I'll, I'll have someone share a link in chat if you're interested in learning more, we have a food mapping masterclass where we clearly, number one, break down all the pieces in digestion that's really critical to lower food reaction. Number two, we give the precise test that you need to identify exactly which foods is triggering the autoimmune attack right? So that means which foods to remove, but most importantly, believe it or not, 90% of the individuals we work with are learning what foods they can put back in and reintroduce more and more and more. And they lose their food trauma and they start to enjoy their food and healing at the same time, right? So that's my food mapping masterclass, but that's how food plays a huge role in autoimmunity. Hey, if you really enjoyed what you're watching and you want to learn more about this topic, make sure you check out, if you're on YouTube, some of the suggestions for what to watch next right here. And if you're watching on any other format, feel free to comment in the comment section. Our team and I will get those resources to you. And if you haven't clicked subscribe yet on YouTube, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified every time we are live. Thanks everyone.